Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So, working on some vines and some more of the garden wall. Almost done the pillar there. Yeah, hard to believe it's a, a new month. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. I'm over 100,000 stitches in. Once again, I'm not starting at zero because uh, I was waiting for the light to come up <laughs> so that it would show up nicely on camera and not be blurry at all. Because, yeah, I learned the hard way. Even with lamps on, if I don't have enough natural light it doesn't it doesn't show up nicely but I want it to be in focus and all that so I have parked, oh, I have a thread of that color already parked up here and I forgot to mark it. Okay, I was thought maybe I had parked something incorrectly, but no, I had not. Okay, well, that's just fine. That means I will park this one lower down instead of up. So actually, I can do more stitches of this color as well. I'm just gonna check the length of this other Right here, all right, that's a medium size piece. And this one's fairly big too, so. I am thinking I'm gonna have to add another one of this color, because I don't think any of these are long enough to uh, cover the whole thing, so. Well, actually, what I might do is yeah, if I use both of them, it might be. We, we shall see. I'm going to park this one down here. Right there. Okay, I'll get back to it in a minute. Yeah, there's sort of one I can do the stitch and end it off quickly, then I will. So yeah, it definitely was not spring. We got a another like 10 centimeters of snow which is about four inches for those who don't use metric and uh they are calling for another 15 to 20 centimeters in a couple of days so yeah as usual <laughs> it's never spring until like late may and even then you never know because like i said we had the one year we had enough snow two days before June for my kid to make a snowman. <laughs> and I mean, like I said, it melted pretty quick, but I mean, still <laughs> enough snow fell May 29th and stuck around long enough. Yeah, you could make a snowman out of it. <laughs> uh, however, yeah, I'm not going to complain too much. We do need the snow because, uh, yeah, we had very little the winter before and because of the drought conditions we had a terrible fire season so yeah another 20 centimeters is is a good thing i think hopefully that will mean things will not be so flammable when the summer comes we don't want that Yeah, it was funny saying about using metric versus not. And said, yeah, Canada is kind of weird like that because officially we use metric, but ask people around here how tall they are in centimeters, no clue, you know. Somebody says somebody's 176 centimeters tall, I have no idea what that means. I have to go and actually find an online calculator and convert it, yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny. So yeah, I had this infographic that said, you know, Canada uses metric. And I said, well, yes, but also no, because <laughs> it really depends. I said, if it's, um, 
if it's distance, we'll say kilometers, but sometimes we also measure in time. We'll say it's an hour away. And uh, yeah, if it's temperature, it's Celsius. Unless you're talking about cooking, then it's generally in Fahrenheit. Yeah, like if you told me to preheat the oven to 200 Celsius, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Ooh. And uh, yeah, so my mother-in-law's um, gingerbread recipe, I had to kind of convert it in my head because she gave it all in metric because she's from, they're in Europe and Europe they use metric more consistently than we do here in Canada. So yeah, she would give weights in kilos and I'm like, I'm not sure how much because a kilo is like 2.2 pounds or something like that. Yeah, and I don't know. I have to do the math, so. <laughs> yeah, they said, you know, you're measuring temperature, is it for cooking? And then is it a pool temperature? Uh, yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> People will still say miles per gallon for how much your car gets, even though everything's kilometers here and we sell gas by the liter not by the gallon here yeah Okay, tablet is being, okay, that wasn't a long press. I was just trying to swipe that one. There we go. It was working fine this morning, but now it's being, it's being glitchy. This needle might be done. There, it had a fiber wrapped around it. Sometimes that means the the eye of the needle is getting kind of rough and can be grabbing your thread, so we'll see. So I like I say, I don't usually make predictions on how much I get done, but I'm pretty safe to say that I will get to a third done this uh this month because yeah we're at 32.76 now and a third is 33.33 so yeah I'm pretty safe to say that that will happen it'll happen before I complete this pass even though it's I have it divided into nine passes and this is a third pass but the first two passes were bigger yeah because I would have had 20 rows left at the end and I prefer to do them before first so that I don't have as much uh, fabric rolled up at the top because yeah that can kind of get in my way so I found it was easier to squeeze them in during the first passes rather than to leave them to the end and try to add it to the last pass and then it would be you know 80 stitches high and or 80 rows high to be too much yeah and I don't really like doing like a thin little strip of just like 20 rows yeah because then you have to move the frame sideways a lot more often and I don't like doing that. It's kind of a pain to wrestle this thing in and out of the stand so yeah I like to only do that when it's absolutely necessary. So some bigger blocks coming up because of the wall once sort of I get past the vines so I should go a little quicker and then yeah the beginning of the next pass will also be it's the ocean and there's not as many colors there so that should go quickly and then I think there's still some more of the peacock's chest as well coming up in this pass sort of yeah yeah the last bit the very bottom part so there won't be as many bigger blocks once we get into the next horizontal pass across this piece Hmm. Hmm.
Oh dear. Yeah, actually I slept fine, so. <laughs> I don't know, when I start talking, I, I need to yawn more. <laughs> well, one of the medications I'm on kind of causes some shortness of breath, so yeah. I don't really notice it that much anymore, but sometimes I sort of, like I said, have to take like a catch-up breath. But I do notice like I can't do strenuous exercise. That's why I do low impact exercise like walking. Cause yeah, <laughs> we went uh, a couple of years ago, we went sledding. There's a big hill and a subdivision near uh, my kiddo's el old elementary school. And uh, we went and I did maybe three runs and by the time I walked up that steep hill to the top, the third time, I was just like, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I was just like <clears throat> gasping for breath. And I was like, what the heck? Like, I'm not that badly out of shape. And I was like, oh yeah, it's the medication. That's one of the side effects. And yeah, so I said, I'm fine as long as I'm not, you know, getting my heart rate really high because then I start freaking dying. <laughs> oh. So I said, yeah, if someone was trying to chase me, I'd be done. I'd maybe be able to walk you know, run two blocks and then I'd be finished. <laughs> oh dear. <sighs> yeah, kind of sucked. Like I'm more used to it now, but especially when I was adjusting to it, oh, it was awful. Feeling all dizzy and stuff. Yeah. Oh, there goes a tiny, tiny little knot. See there, yep. Yeah feel that right there and it's going to end up on the right side so what I'm going to do is go back down and I'm going to tuck over here as if I was finishing off this thread this way that ensures that the knot stays on the back and not on the front there uses up a bit of thread, but I mean, with a knot there, that bit of thread was kind of useless anyway, so this way I didn't have to cut it out and start a new bit, so. Yeah, so it's been kind of off and on whether my kiddo can drive himself to school, because some days it's warm enough, and then some days it's, yeah, not. Yeah, my husband will kind of go out and check how the truck starts and if it's really super rough then we know it's too cold and he turns it off again yeah especially with um we have block heater at home but there's nowhere to plug in at the school's parking lot and so yeah if it's sort of it barely starts up in our driveway then it's not going to start up at the end of the day from sitting yeah in the uh in the school parking lot all day so yeah and then uh, my kiddo was like well mom can i take your car and i was like well the day that was too cold, I said, sorry, I have an acupuncture appointment. So, yeah, it's not going to work. Dad will drop you off. Ugh. Yeah, that is going well again. Neck is feeling much better. In fact, I have to sort of remind myself to go lie down on my, my neck stretcher board every day. I try to keep up with it just a few minutes every day. It's uh, got a curve on it, and it just sort of kind of helps to keep the natural correct curve of your of your neck vertebrae. Yeah, and when my neck is feeling good, I sort of sometimes forget to do it. And I find if I keep up with it every day, it does help to keep things from going out of whack for me and causing pain. But yeah, I have two sessions left, and we'll assess from there. But I think I will be probably good for close to another year after that. Yeah, first couple times it was really uncomfortable afterwards. Like I said, it kind of hurt worse before it got better, but I was expecting that. That was my experience last time too, because yeah, things were very tight and restricted in movement. And once you get it moving again, that can cause a lot of soreness. Kind of like, yeah, if you are really sore and someone gives you a massage at first, it's, oh, ouch, 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 until it starts to feel better, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so my acupuncturist has a student who is observing. She, they asked if it was, and I said that was fine. Yeah, I didn't worry about it. But uh, 
Yeah, and it was funny because my acupuncturist said that she actually had a bit of a needle phobia for a while, and she was not going to do it. She was going to do just physiotherapy because they do all sorts of different therapies there. They do physiotherapy and, yeah, massage, as well as, you know, the acupuncture and all this other kind of stuff. And uh, But she said, yeah, there were a few people going for it and saying that it really helped them, so she got more interested in it. But, yeah. Because she said, yeah, of course, you students, they practice on each other, so, yeah, you have to get over your, uh, your phobia of needles pretty quick because, yeah... lot of it involved so but yeah it's good because like I said the chiropractor was just not really giving me much relief anymore it would last for a couple of days it never felt like things properly released like they are with the acupuncture so that's what I'm going to stick with and yeah last year our health plan was covering all but the last $15, but this year they seem to have improved it and everything's been completely covered, which has been really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same place my husband went. He, uh, he tore his Achilles tendon a few years ago and he, so he had to have physio during recovery to regain the movement. But yeah, he said it was ridiculous. He, he injured it hopping over a puddle in our driveway, you know, something so simple. And uh, yeah, the doctor said, yeah, sometimes that's just how it happens. You know, you, you don't really do anything fancy, but wow, well, middle age, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so that, it didn't, it didn't get all the way. So he had to wear a cast for a while. He was fortunate they didn't need surgery to fix it. And uh, then he had a walking boot for, well, no, then he had one of those, um, I don't know what you call them, like walking, uh, I'm not sure, walking something, but basically it's you kneel on it and it's like a, like a walking wheeled cart thing, yeah, that you use so that you don't have to use a wheelchair and you don't have to use crutches, right, and, uh, and then he had that, he was in crutches for a while, and uh, then he had to wear a walking boot for a while, and he even had to sleep in it, so we had to get a big pillowcase and a big um, hairband to hold the pillowcase so he didn't get the bed all gross, right? And uh, yeah, he had to do that for a while, and then he had to do physio for a while. Yeah, it was a whole thing. Yeah. Really sucked. <laughs> oh. oh, I must have left this color... I must have left it in my other tray. I have two working trays. I have one for um, for my firefly piece and one for this piece. And I packed away my firefly one yesterday. And I always check to see what colors are in both. So I take it out of the firefly tray if it's in this one. But I must have forgotten. So I will have to do that after I finish filming today. Missed one. There hasn't been a lot of overlap between these right now because the color palettes are very different. Yeah, the Firefly is very dark in coloring. Lots of blacks, dark grays, navy blues, that kind of thing. And then this one has been a lot brighter and lighter colors. So, but yeah, there is some overlap. And I missed one. So I don't have a little thread card in here right now to put my leftover bits on. I'll just have to put them loose in the envelope until I can get my thread card from my other working tree. Yeah, I really only have been using dark colors on this one when it's sort of the shading on the edges of vines and stuff. It's been otherwise a very light and bright part of the color wheel. Yeah, 
the only thing I said with the, I don't complain about the weather because we need the snow, but I do prefer to do my walks outside. I have my machine for inside, but yeah, I do miss that. Yeah, right before it snowed, I went out for a walk like that morning and then that night it, it dumped a ton of snow on us. So I said, well, good thing I got that one last walk in before it, uh, before it did that. Yeah. So I'm gonna set this envelope aside and not put it back in my tub to remind me that I need to retrieve that, uh, that thread card from the other tray. Oh my goodness. Like I said, I swear I'm not that tired. So if I can manage to finish uh, this um, pass within this month, that means that each pass will be about three months and I have six remaining, so. Next project I plan to do Deer Creek. So that one off. Got some lighter colors coming up here so I've been drawing these across the back for now to ensure they don't show through on the other side. Color changing for a bit. So my friend who is having 
issues with her house with uh, water damage. It's got all fixed now, so yeah, she plans to have a uh, house rewarming party. <laughs> yeah, for us to come see the renos and stuff she's done. So yeah, I think saying I might give her my uh, I finished a blanket a couple years ago that I knit, and it's been sitting in my closet because I have literally bags and bags of blankets I've made. So we have tons that we use. So I, I keep knitting them just sort of to have a knitting project on the go because it's, it's more portable, I find, than the cross-stitch. So, and uh, yeah, so I just sort of keep making blankets and then sticking them in the closet for when I need a, a gift for someone. <laughs> so yeah, I'll probably give her that. Mm. Yeah, cause like I say, when I'm watching figure skating, I still like to have something to do with my hands, but I can't cross stitch because, yeah, you have to be looking at your cross stitching, so, yeah, I knit because I can do that by feel. Hard to believe it's going to be time for my kiddo to pick his classes for next year. Yeah, wild. <laughs> this year has flown by. Next year's his senior year, which is just like what? <laughs> yeah, my uh, my niece she had headshots made because she works as an extra in movies and stuff and she's hoping to break out into the business one day but uh anyway my sister posted them on facebook and i said oh my gosh she has no business looking this grown up like what yeah she's i think 15 now and just my word it's just wild too because like i said to my sister it's like wait a minute it feels like we were that age like a few years ago which obviously is not possible if our kids are this age, you know. Uh, and we didn't have our kids super young either. We were in our 20s, so, yeah. Yeah, I think my dad freaked out about me turning 30 more than I did. Because <laughs> he said, well, at a certain age, you sort of don't really notice how much older you are. You sort of hit those milestones, but when your kids hit a certain age, it yeah, kind of reinforces to you how old you are, yeah. And then your grandkids, right, eventually. Yeah. Because I said, yeah, you know, as you're growing up, there's big deals. 16, you can drive a car. 18, you can vote, you know. <clears throat> and such, but yeah. Sort of after you sort of hit sort of 30, you don't really notice so much anymore. You've usually found your your groove by then, right? Yeah. Yeah, the years just sort of start to slip by. <laughs> like, yeah, my husband's going to be 50 
in another few years, which is just like, but how? <laughs> oh. Well, we've been married 22 years, but it doesn't feel that long, I gotta say. Even though, obviously, I know it has been, but yeah, it was kind of funny the other day. He was all looking around for something, and I knew what he was looking for, so I just sort of picked it up and handed it to him. He's like, that's funny, I didn't even have to ask you. I'm like, well, that's 22 years of marriage for you, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's like somebody said, their parents one time, they're visiting, and her dad's looking in the closet, and her mom says, you know, what are you looking for? And he says, oh, nothing. She says, no, they're not there. They're in the hall closet, you know? <laughs> like she knew what he was looking for without him even having to say it, yeah. Uh. now I'm going to make a cut off sort of right here and work my way across for a bit and then again drop down and start working my way out yeah. just sort of follow the colors on the pattern and decide sort of from there which direction I want to go sometimes it lends itself more to more vertical stitching and sometimes more horizontal kind of work. Sometimes I work more of a curve the other way. If like, say, the tail feathers were going that way, I ended up working more in that direction last month. Yeah, as I said, I'm not calling this the color, my color flow method because it changes which direction I go to depending on which way the colors are going. Yeah, so I started at 180, I believe, at the beginning of this session. But yeah, there's been quite a few color changes, so it does go a bit slower when that happens. saying about the snow we get a big enough of a snow drift now that if my husband's driving us home he stops at uh the end of our driveway to let us out before he actually pulls into his parking spot in front of our front yard because there's a huge snow drift there from clearing off the sidewalk yeah so that way we don't have to get out and climb into the fall down into the snow drift because yeah it's not packed enough for you to walk on top of it if you try to break through and get stuck in fact i had a video of our kiddo was trying to do that in the backyard and then he got stuck and he lost his boots and yeah they had to come and rescue him pull him out dig his boots out of the snowbank and put him back on him when he was he was like three or something yeah Ugh. and you'd we had a video like where he's trying to and you can see he's like walking really slowly trying to put his weight on it really slowly so it wouldn't collapse but yeah, no such luck. It was at that point where it's sort of melted and refrozen, so it's like a bunch of ice crystals instead of really snow, and it's very brittle, and yes, it, it can't support the weight of, like, anything. It looks like it would be either packed or, like, soft, but it's not. It's sort of in the middle. <laughs> it's full of air pockets, and yeah... You try to put weight on it, it just collapses. Okay. Now I may do some out of order here because, yeah, it's just the way these threads are crossing past each other. So, yeah, I try not to close stuff in, but sometimes it happens. 
I still, like I say, try to limit it to three sides closed in at the most. I try to never have it closed in as four, all four sides. I just find it a little easier to get the needle through and I find the resulting stitch is a little bit neater, so. Like probably not enough that anyone would really notice, but me, but yeah. Since I would notice, I do try to, to keep things as tidy as possible. this color. So what I may do is fill in a little bit further to the right and then that'll be, I'll make a cut off there and start filling in, whoops, unthreaded, start filling in more stuff that's over to the left. Technically, I can fit all that's left to do within my 11 by 17 frame, but I don't like reaching that far. So I'm going to be moving the frame over at least a couple more times before we reach that far edge. Yeah, I can see sort of there's a symbol that sort of makes a natural break point right a couple stitches away from where I'm working right now, and that's where I will I will do the same with my stitching. So my husband and I have been watching uh, 24, which is a uh, early 2000s show uh, where it's, um, well, it's called 24 because it's 24 hours of one day that some incident takes place over. And I don't know if we're going to finish it. We're on season four and it's kind of starting to get a little ridiculous. <laughs> like we're just like all the stuff that he pulls, like he would so be in jail by now. Like, yeah. He goes rogue all the time and, like, doesn't even get a slap on the wrist. And it's kind of getting irritating, I find. So we'll see. Like, my husband said, we'll finish this season. We're on the fourth season because, you know, we're already a few episodes in. So we might as well. But, yeah, it went on for, like, nine seasons. And I'm not sure whether we're going to finish the rest. Yeah, some shows, they do get 
kind of repetitive when they go on that long. Well, they said the thing is they're trying to drag things out, right? Because, yeah, there's a podcaster I listened to who said she doesn't really like to watch TV unless it's a mini series because she said, like, they don't know where they're going. They're trying to drag it out. And so often you can end up with characters doing stuff simply for the sake of keeping the show going and not something that's actually true to like the character themselves or yeah like it can get really frustrating so yeah and i mean yeah i i like watching tv but she's got a point sometimes that is frustrating because yeah if it's a mini series then they have a predetermined ending they have a you know plotted out story arc already already formed and so yeah they tend to not as much go off into weird tangent tangents whereas with TV that you're trying, you were trying to get syndicated. All you care about is trying to produce as many episodes as possible, right? Well, not all you care about, but that is one of the, you know, ends up being one of the primary goals. So, which, yeah, I think it works best on procedural shows, you know, like CSI or something, because even though people do like to follow the characters, Pretty much you can plug in anybody and the, the story format still works, right? Here's the here's the mystery, here's the steps they're taking to solve the mystery. Yeah. So So yeah, we'll see if we bother finishing it or not. But yeah, there's plenty of stuff to watch. It's funny, my husband thought Disney Plus had only Disney films and stuff on it. I said no, that's why it's called Disney Plus. If they have the rights to the streaming because yeah I said oh though there's plenty of stuff on there that is not Disney that's you know rated TV mature and it definitely is <laughs> yeah they have a lot of series by FX on there and star which are <clears throat> tend to be rated more heavily yeah as R or yeah R rated mature rated so I said well that's why there's parental controls on there so that yeah your kids could have their own and they can only, you know, access, say, the stuff that's PG or or G if that's the way you wanted to set it up. So, yeah. The one thing I find kind of irritating is, okay, so we have it, um, we have it uh, loaded in. We have two TV boxes because we got two TVs. And um, the annoying thing is if you turn the captions on, on the Disney Plus app, it turns it on on every instance of it. So I said it's kind of frustrating because you can watch two separate streams at a time. That's what we're paying for. But that means you can either have captions on on both or captions off on both, which is kind of frustrating because my husband prefers to watch without captions. I prefer to watch with. So, yeah, kind of irritating because I found with, like, when we had um, Prime Video, it was, it was local to the device you were streaming from. So you could watch one stream with captions and one without, which served us better. I mean, we rarely watch two streams at one time. But there were times, like, um, my husband and son were watching um, Top Gear, which is a, a show about cars. And I would be watching something else on the other TV. And yes, I, like I said, I watch mine with captions. They watch theirs without. And then now with the Disney service, you can't do that, which is kind of kind of irritating. Yeah. And the TELUS box, the new ones that we upgraded to are also not as, not as reliable as to whether the captions show up. Because like, say, one of the packages of channels that we subscribe to includes Vision TV. And Vision TV was always very good about having captions on everything. And uh, they didn't change, but our TV box did change because it upgraded to the new one. And the new one is very inconsistent. I will toggle the captions off and back on again, but they still won't come on sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'll be watching it without the captions because they wouldn't come on, and then they'll show up halfway through. Uh, it doesn't matter if I reset the box. It still is random. I'll have, say, four episodes of Murder, She Wrote that were recorded from that channel, and some of them will play back without the captions showing, and some will play with, even though I have it on all the time on the TV that's primarily the one I use most of the time, and yeah, so it's very frustrating. 
Like I said, again, it's, it's a preference. I don't actually need it. I'm fortunate enough that I can here, but you know, it's still, it's annoying. Yeah. And I said, it really sucked because I was watching one show called uh, Sue Thomas FBI, which is about a deaf FBI agent. She can read lips. She can talk and sign, but she is deaf. And I said, yeah. And half the time the captains won't show up on there. It's like, Wow, you have a char you know, a show that's got a disabled main character and then it's not accessible to people watching it. What kind of sense does that make, right? Uh, but it's not Vision TV's fault. It's it's Telus Optic, the new TV box. I did email them and let them know that they need to fix their software and update that because it's extremely frustrating. And I had one time I had captions turned on and then for some reason it turned on descriptive video as well which is for people who are visually impaired and yeah and then when I turned the descriptive video off it turned the captions off too it's like come on guys <laughs> those are separate services oh yeah we had to watch one time and we were watching through Grimm on Prime and somebody messed up and they uploaded the Spanish audio um for one episode instead of the English audio. And so we said, okay, well, let's switch it to see if the Spanish one, if they got, you know, if they got it reversed, but no, the Spanish one was Spanish and the English one was also Spanish. And we're like, so what are we gonna do? And then my husband's like, well, I guess we could watch this one episode in descriptive video. Yeah, because then at least we wouldn't miss anything. Cause it was one of those shows that has overarching stories. And yeah, the one that they did, it was like major plot points were revealed. So we would have really missed out on, uh, some mega revelations if we just skipped that episode because I was saying I was wondering if I was going to have to google like a recap online because sometimes yeah then at least if we could read the recap we wouldn't be lost right but yeah so that was kind of annoying <laughs> yeah somebody blew it when they were they were uploading that one Maybe it was mislabeled, who knows. It's like, um, yeah, with my Christmas music, there's a, a like listening to the 101 Strings version. And they have one that's labeled as Bell Carol, Good Christian Men Rejoice. And it's not, it's Here Comes Santa Claus. Like it's not even close, but you go on iTunes and yeah, somebody labeled the metadata wrong. So I don't know if they ever actually recorded the Bell Carol, but you can't find it anywhere. Yeah. Everywhere where it claims it's that, it's not. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, this is sort of as far as I'm going to go over to the right for now. So, just tuck those away. And then I'm going to go back over to the left and start working my way back out from there. Yeah, plus this thread is just about to run out, so that sort of seems like a good place to also make the cutoff. So I'm going to unthread this one, because it'll be a while till I work my way out towards it. Holy cow. I say it's not spring, but whole flock of birds just took up in the neighbor's uh, tree and they're twitter twittering away So after that big bunch of snow it's calling for, it's supposed to warm up to be barely below freezing. So I may still get to walk outside as long as I bundle up. <laughs> so I 
think the vines kind of curve this way, so we'll see if I end up sort of following that or not. So what I may do is I'll go all the way into this corner here and then start working my way out again. more of the pillar here. <laughs> yeah, so this summer we plan to be a bit busy. We're going to finally replace the old carpets in this place. Cause yeah, it's uh, it was old when we moved in, and that was before our kiddo was born. So yeah, <laughs> well, there's one where the fiber got caught and it's it kind of pulled like a run in a stocking, and so there's like yeah, this strip of just bare floor now because the carpet got. It was so funny because our son accidentally he pulled it out and then he tried to fix it with duct tape. <laughs> like six or seven he's like don't worry mom I, I made actually made a hole in the carpet but I fixed it <laughs> and then over time it kind of yeah I got a little too close with the vacuum cleaner it got caught by the power head and just yeah ripped it up and so yeah it is time but it's a pain because you know we got furniture in our bedrooms and everything so we're gonna have to bring everything out sort of camp out in the living room get that replaced Put everything back in the living room we plan to repaint because yeah it's again pretty shabby so yeah i'm kind of dreading it but it's got to be done we do have hardwood in our living room which we're keeping and uh yeah i don't think we're gonna planning on replacing any of the linoleum yet i mean that stuff lasts for Ever, right so but, uh, that would be kind of a pain too because our uh, our dining room set has to be disassembled to be taken out of the room yeah, it's too big to just uh, to just pick it up and move it the, the the doorway is too small for it to fit so yeah yeah, and then we said so when we do that, we'll replace our kiddo's bed because he's got a bunk bed, which is what we moved him out of his toddler bed when he got bigger. But yeah, he's getting too big for that now. <laughs> he's getting too tall. So it'll be time to get him an actual grown up size bed. It's one thing, it's nice if you can do that stuff before you actually move in and you don't have furniture to deal with, but oh well, what you gonna do, right? Yeah. We did some of the floors downstairs when my husband was renovating our recreation room, so yeah, we got carpet put down there. And then he plans to put another bathroom downstairs eventually. We used to have one, but the design wasn't very good. And he actually, we knocked it out so we could make the rec room area bigger. And then we're going to put, instead of a bathtub, just a little, you know, corner shower. Yeah. In sort of the laundry room area, there's a, a good corner for it there. So we'll do that. Because, yeah, right now we have... Um, we have a little two-piece ensuite, no shower, and um, and then just so it's like one bath for all of us. So it'd be kind of nice to have a second, a second shower. So eventually, <laughs> that is the plan. Yeah, 
yeah, my father-in-law is looking at moving, probably going to come out closer to us because well, basically all his grandkids are here in this province. So, yeah. And he said sort of the house he's in right now is too big for just him since, you know, my mother-in-law passed away. So, yeah. He's retiring, I think, this summer. And, yeah, then he's planning to... uh to downsize because yeah, like he said he doesn't need that much space well when they bought that house I think they still had three or four kids at home they have six total so yeah you know they needed a lot more room but now they're all they're an empty nest so yeah for just one person he does not need and doesn't really want to deal with that much space so Yeah, so it was certainly, we'd like to have him a little closer, especially now that he's getting older, right? Don't really want him having to deal with snow removal by himself and that, so. Yeah, it'd be nice to see him more often because we only manage to get out there, you know, once a year, sometimes once every couple of years, so. Because it's a, it's a long ways away, so. Yeah, that'd be kind of nice as well. Yeah, because um, well, our kiddo is almost grown, but my husband's brother and wife, they have seven kids. And uh, yeah, the youngest are still, you know, elementary school age. So it certainly would be nice to be closer to them too. Yeah, they had to buy a giant nine-seater vehicle. <laughs> Although now they're, you know, oldest is. Yeah, she's getting married, actually, this coming summer. And it's kind of funny because I was thinking, man, isn't she young to be getting married? And then I did the math and went, oh, actually, she's older than me than when I got married. So <laughs> I have no business saying anything. I mean, I, I like her fiancé. He's great. So, yeah. It's just like, you feel like you were older than your kids were even at the same age, right? Like, yeah, it's just a weird phenomenon, right? Like, when I was 16, 17, my son's age, I felt grown, you know? And now it's like, no, but you're a baby, you're not grown. <laughs> mm. How are you almost a legal adult? No, I refuse to believe it. You know, stick my fingers in my ears, la la la. <laughs> uh. Yeah, like somebody said, the days can be long, but the years just fly by, and that's true. Is yeah, when our son got his uh his driver's license, and then. Yeah, my husband had a picture of him, you know, saying, oh, here he is in his truck and he's driving. And it seems like just yesterday we were bringing him home from the hospital. Like, how? Oh. Yeah, I even have online friends, you know, that I've known since he was really little. And they're just like, no, he's a baby. He can't be driving yet. <laughs> oh. Yeah, one of my friends said, but he's just a baby. Why are you letting him drive away? <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh. He still lets me call him his childhood nickname, so, yeah. I told him if it bugs him and he wants me to stop, I will, but so far he hasn't asked me to, so, yeah. Because I remember, like, my sister had a nickname that she did not like to be called once she got past a certain age, so... And my dad was always bugging her with it. So I always said that, yeah, I would respect when my kids did not want to be called their childhood nickname anymore. So but I'm very thankful that hasn't been put to the test yet. <laughs> he hasn't asked me to stop, so. Uh. Yeah, 
yeah, it's funny too. People are talking about they want their nickname to be, and it's like, no, you don't pick your nickname. It happens, right? Somebody calls you that, and that is what sticks. Yeah. Nickname or pet name, right? Yeah. And sometimes your nickname, only one person's allowed to call you that, right? Yeah. Yeah, my husband calls me Jem. And he's the only one I'm okay with calling me that. Anyone else, it bugs me. But with him, it's okay. Yeah. And I said, yeah, it was the same thing as watching Supernatural. Dean calls him Sammy. And somebody else tries to call him Sam. And he's like, nope, Dean's the only one who's allowed to call me that. Because he's his big brother, right? So, yeah. Okay, so I think I'll take a break soon. I'll stitch for a little bit longer. Not really any goal I want to get to, but... Like I said, I started at just under 200. I was like 180 when I started. We're past 300 now, so... Okay, so yeah, I think I'll do these three and park it, and then that's where I'm going to take a break for today.
to hang out with y'all for over an hour. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know I did. Always uh, so honored that you guys enjoy spending time with me. All right, so yeah, that's where I'm going to call it a day. Um, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here next time. Hey, thanks everyone.